I am a Yank in Sussex. Have you seen the 1991 film Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves? If you have, you will know that it starred American actor Kevin Costner as Robin Hood. While the film was the second highest grossing film in its year of release, the critics had a field day with it. They didn't like the story, the violence, and they didn't like Costner's performance. He got a Golden Raspberry Award for Worst Actor. Audiences didn't seem to care, however, that the critics didn't like the film or Costner's performance, and they didn't especially seem to care that the critics were annoyed that Costner didn't even attempt an English accent. The chef calls us outlaws, but I say we are free. This is English courage. But not an English accent, because that stuff's apparently for suckers. Many people complain about his performance in this, mainly because he's the only person in the film without an English accent. One of the main problems critics and fans had with the film was Kevin Costner's performance. I understand that Costner did hire a voice coach to teach him how to do it, but the director told him not to bother. The other American actors playing English characters, such as the ones playing Maid Marian and Will Scarlet, did attempt accents and succeeded in varying degrees. As it happens, the famous film reviewer Roger Ebert, who didn't like the film at all, didn't care that Costner didn't have an English accent. He wrote, Neither the accent nor the lack of same bothered me in the slightest. Of course, that's because he hated the film, so the lack of an accent was the least of his concerns. Now, why would a Yank in Sussex care about this? Well, I loved the film, and I still do. I recognize that there were plenty of historical errors in such things as clothing and weapons, not to mention some of the historical miscues. For example, Azim's sword was totally anachronistic. Scimitars like those Azim was carrying didn't exist in the 12th century. And at some point... Robin Hood and Azim are clamoring over a section of Hadrian's Wall, which is far in the north of England and nowhere near Sherwood Forest. But as a confirmed lover of things British, I was impressed with the mainly genuine-looking sets, weapons, and costuming. The actors who were actually English did a great job, too. Another thing of interest, to me at least, is this. The chalk cliffs seen as Robin is returning to England after fighting in the Crusades were not the White Cliffs of Dover, as some people assumed, that they were the Seven Sisters in Sussex. And it happens that I excuse Costner's lack of an English accent, because if he had attempted an English accent, I have a strong feeling he would have sounded ridiculous. And the critics would have complained about that instead. I think they would have complained even louder than they did in the first place. But which accent were they wanting Costner to use? There is, of course, what is sometimes called the Standard English Accent, or BBC English, or more formally, the Received Pronunciation. Is that what, what was expected from Costner? Oh, please. Only about 3% of British people regularly use this. He would have looked patently ridiculous if he had sounded like that master of posh Received Pronunciation, Jacob Rees Mogg, Member of Parliament, but the freedom of the press and freedom of speech are absolutely at the heart of our democracy. And members of parliament should remember that this freedom will be exercised in a way that does not always provide hagiographies for us. Can you imagine Robin Hood telling the Sheriff of Nottingham where to get off sounding like that? These round, dulcet tones are great for telling your fellow parliamentarians they are buffoons, and the Honorable Rees Mogg is an expert at that. And I think in the uh, Foreign Secretary's speech, he made six points which must have been written for him by the Liberal Democrats, because he's far too clever a man to have thought of them for himself, because they don't really add up. But can you imagine him robbing the rich to give to the poor? In that accent? I can't. Or maybe Costner should have given Cockney a try. That would have been quite authentic, don't you think? You're asking me about a Cockney accent? Did you know that Cockney used to be a pejorative term for the working class? Yeah, nonsense. It's the accent of a true Londoner. Or maybe not, especially since Cockney didn't exist at the time, if that matters. In fact, if they had made the movie with genuine medieval speech, nobody could have understood them. Except maybe a few specialists, ones who probably don't go to movies like this. In the film Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, Costner's Robin of Loxley is portrayed as a nobleman. And English King Richard I Lionheart made an appearance too, played by Sean Connery in a cameo in all his royal splendor. We are deeply honored, Your Majesty. It is I who am honored, Lord Loxley. Thanks to you, I still have a throne. 
Now, does anyone find that a bit odd? If Kevin Costner gets chaff over not attempting an English accent, what about Sean Connery? He made a great-looking King Richard. But in case you missed it, he didn't attempt an English accent either. Sean spoke like a true Scotsman. The problem is that virtually all the noblemen in England at this time in history were descendants of the Norman invaders who had conquered England a hundred years previously. Virtually none of them spoke English as their birth tongue. They spoke Norman French. As for King Richard, he himself did not spend in total more than six months in England during his entire ten-year reign and never learned to speak English. It's highly unlikely he would have shown up at Robin and Marion's forest wedding. The real King Richard, and for that matter the real Robin of Loxley, would actually have sounded a bit like this, which is a sample of the Norman French that is still spoken on the Channel Island of Jersey. V'la no pèd e no pum ben l'washi no jum J'omè de memwèd dum Ave va dite tum Che le vwetem ci fè volè Tu kum la piem Richard's younger brother John who became king after Richard, actually despised the English language. And, of course, he never learned it either. And to be fully accurate as to what the English people were speaking at the supposed time of Robin Hood, this is what they sounded like. Juan that April, with his sure as sorter, the drought of March had pierced to the rot, and barred every lane and switchly core of which were engendered his the floor. Okay, I grant you that they couldn't have gone down the road of real language verisimilitude because nobody would have watched it, because they couldn't have understood it. Like Mel Gibson's Apocalypto and Passion of the Christ, which were filmed in ancient languages, it would have needed subtitles. That isn't the only problem, though. Worse, how many Hollywood actors can speak Old or Middle English these days? You get the point. The problem with Costner's lack of an English accent is this. Which one should he have used? There are at least 30 different accents. I suppose that he might have attempted something like American actor Robert Downey Jr. did for Sherlock Holmes from A Game of Shadows. No, but might I trouble you for an inscription? That's a good try. His speech is still recognizably American, but maybe he should get extra credit for trying? Well, that doesn't always work. When we look at Russell Crowe in the 2010 version of Robin Hood... His character is just a common archer impersonating a nobleman, and this is how he sounds. You're trying to build for the future. You must set your foundation strong. The laws of this land enslave people to its king. Not bad, right? In any case, this Yank in Sussex, upon listening to Crow in the movie Gladiator many years ago, actually thought he was English. Little did I know at the time, Crow is a New Zealand-born Australian. His accent, to some Americans at least, sounds English on any given day, but even he can't catch a break. I still think Aussie New Zealanders sound rather British, but the British media criticized him for what they called his variable accent during the film. The Empire Film Magazine said his accent was occasionally Scottish, while Total Film Magazine thought there were also times when it sounded Irish. When critic Mark Lawson interviewed Crow on BBC Radio 4, he suggested that there were hints of Irish in his accent. Mr. Crow, who does not suffer nonsense from critics at the best of times, put up with it for a bit and tried to explain why the accent might have been a bit different in the context of the story. But when Lawson continued to insist upon there being a touch of Irish, Crow gave up and left the interview. Scottish? Irish? Or the Nottingham accent, since Sherwood is in Nottinghamshire? What was he supposed to use, anyway? Crow and Costner could have both pointed to the great Errol Flynn playing Robin Hood and asked, which is worse, him or me? Greetings, Your Highness. You know, you should really teach Gisborne hospitality. I no sooner enter his castle doors there with a piece of meat than his starving servants try to snatch it from him. You should feed them, Gisborne. They'll work better. The compliments of your royal brother, King Richard, God bless him. Which brings us to Sussex. I was wanting to relate this video to Sussex, and I figured that folks in Sussex speak English with their own distinguishing accent. After all, with 30 accents in England, one of them has got to be distinctively Sussex, right? The folks in Newcastle have the Geordie accent, 
People in Cornwall have Cornish, and those in the Southwest have the West Country accent. But I discovered that the old Sussex accent was pretty much no longer in use. It seems to have gotten flattened out to a generalized Southeast England accent used by folks in Sussex, Kent, and Hampshire. No doubt there are still old Sussex residents who speak with the old accent, or who can at least put on such an accent, but I didn't want to delay this video any further. So I did some searching in order to find something online to demonstrate that old accent. Surprisingly, I did find something. The following is from an old 78 RPM record that was recorded and issued in the 1920s. There's more to it than just this 41 second excerpt, but it should suffice to give the flavor of the accent. I should mention that I found this on a channel called Video Curios. Link to the original video and Video Curios channel is in the description. There was an old woman lived alone in a cottage in the woods called Old Mother Cornford, and she caused a lot of trouble to the people there. If anybody offended her, she'd cast a spell on his cats and dogs and such like to make them go sick. And she'd wish the people misfortune as well. And they was took bad too. You can be sure the people in those parts was middling careful not to offend her. And they never went night a place. Even the baker and the grocer from the town would leave the order outside the garden gate. She's dead now, and it's a middling funny thing or I can get no one to live in the old cottage. Well, that does it for now. This has been a production of A Yank in Sussex. If you've enjoyed this video, please click the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Click the notification bell if you wish to be notified of new videos appearing on this channel. Thanks for watching. You have a good day.